In this podcast, I'd like to describe the Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits. Specifically, I want to define the Thevenin equivalent circuit and the Norton equivalent circuit and tell you how to determine what those values are. So let's get the basic idea. So essentially imagine that you have some complicated situation, right, in that you maybe you're going to measure some V out over here, or you're going to add some circuit element over there. But the idea is that you can take this complicated circuit and you can replace it by some simpler circuit. And in the end, it's equivalent. And so that means if you take a load resistor and place it across V out, right, those load resistors will experience the same change in potential and the same current no matter which circuit they're in. So these two circuits are equivalent and this simpler circuit is called the Thevenin's equivalent circuit. So in the same manner as you can do Thevenin's, you can do the Norton equivalent circuit. You can take the same complicated circuit right, and you can represent it or as equivalent to a current source, a constant current source and a resistor. Right? And so the idea is if we take a load resistor and we put them across each of those circuits, they'll experience the same change in potential and the same current. Essentially, that load resistor won't know whether it's hooked up to this complicated circuit or whether it's hooked up to this simpler circuit. So how do we... And then this simpler circuit is called the Norton equivalent circuit when you have the constant current source. So how do you find out what those Thevenin... Um, potential and feminine resistance is. So essentially we've said this complicated circuit is equivalent to this simple circuit. So how do we find that out? So how do we find V Thevenin? So we have that out. The first thing you do is you remove the load resistor if there is one. This circuit has one. And two, then you find V out. Either you calculate it or you measure it. And then V Thevenin is equal to V out. So we remove the load resistor we hook up a, a voltmeter, and V Thevenin is going to be equal to V out. So we can calculate it, or we can measure it with a voltmeter. Well, now we need. Now we know how to find V Thevenin. How do we find R Thevenin? Well, how do we do that? We remove the load resistor if there is one, and there is one in the circuit. We remove the battery, replace it with the wire. So essentially, we're going to short out the battery. And then we're going to find our equivalent as measured from the output, either calculate it or measure it. So what's that going to look like? We're going to remove the load resistor. We're going to short out the battery. Then we're going to measure the, the resistance as measured when you hook up an ohmmeter to the output. Okay, so that's, that's the plan. Then our equivalent is just equal to our Thevenin, whatever we measure or whatever we calculate. How do you do find the Norton equivalent? Well, it turns out a similar procedure. You remove the load resistor. You find the current through the wire. Calculator, measure it, and then I Thevenin is equal to I through the wire. How do you find R Norton? Remove the load. Essentially, it's the same as the Thevenin. Remove the load resistor. Remove the battery. Replace it with the wire. And then find R equivalent as measured from the output. Now, it turns out, as you might tell from the that the procedure is the same, that it turns out the Norton equivalent resistance and the Thevenin equivalent resistance are the same, and then it turns out that V Thevenin over I Norton is equal to the, equi the equivalent resistance or the Thevenin or Norton resistance. So with the basic idea, this is about equivalence, and it's related to the idea of equivalent resistors, right? It's just now it's on a different level. We can replace complicated circuits with something that's a simpler circuit. That ends this podcast.